great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like new stuff before anybody else, if you like to keep your finger on the pulse, if you like the future and want to be in it, you keep on listening because we'll start in a minute. Uh, tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Uh, tech webcast. Because technology it moves so fast. Tech webcast. Ha, stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah! Tech, 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 tech webcast. Ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Let's go! And welcome to episode 298 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 26th of July 2014. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at midday. Please rate us on iTunes and like us at facebook.com forward slash Tech Webcast. And remember to follow us at Twitter on Tech Webcast. Your hosts today are Brad, Jody, Steve, and myself, Andrew. And our special guest today is Josh Armour from Wrestle Radio Australia. And just finally, don't forget we have a Quick Flix Chromecast giveaway. Three months of free Quick Flix and a Chromecast to go with that. So not a bad deal at all. And we'll, we'll run through that a little bit later on in the show, Brad. Yes, indeed. Hello, Andrew. How's your week been, mate? Yeah, really good, mate. Really good. Um, busy as always. We've been working on a new project, which I, I might actually touch on later in the show as well. Sure, um, sure. So, yeah, so it's good. been a busy week and sort of getting there, and it's my wife's 30th oh, birthday yeah. today. So we've got a few friends coming over later on, so sort of it's all stations go at the moment. So uh, sort okay. of running around doing a whole million and one things. Where is Chris at the moment? I'll just, we went on wish you happy happy birthday to her. She's 30 today, is she? 30. Yeah, she is. She's just over there. So she's um, 30 today, but and she's she's a bit radio shy as Christy. So. Is she really? Happy yeah, birthday. she is. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, Steve, maybe you can play the birthday song, maybe. The birthday? Oh, <laughs> the no. end. Well, if you had some warning, maybe. I, I just gave him some warning just then. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it should be good, mate. should be good. Yeah, absolutely. Abs- abs- absolutely. So, how's your week been, Brad? What have you yeah, been mate, up to, mate? I caught up with you on uh, Wednesday or something, I think it was, last week. Yeah, we did. We did. What is it? Um, bi-weekly catch-up every couple of weeks. Whatever. We'll catch up and have a bit of lunch, which is always nice. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, so what you're doing that and stuff like that. Um, yeah. What else has been happening? We've got Jody back on. Welcome, Jody, for another action packed podcast. Action packed, wow. exciting, and so, intense. Yes, <laughs> and all that sort of fun stuff. Yeah, Jennifer's, Jennifer's not on, not on uh, again today. Yeah, we miss Jennifer. And uh, she'll be back in a couple of weeks. That's great. Yeah, that is- it, it's a shame. But I guess she was traveling and, and she's tired. So, yes, indeed. You know, that's what happens when you start getting old, Jennifer. <laughs> what are you Jennifer. To say? Uh, also, we've got, we've got Steve on. Welcome, Steve. Welcome back. Hey, how you doing? Actually, talking about old, I, it was funny. I was at IHOP today, and I was looking at the, they got the senior special. I'm like, just thinking, seven more years, I can actually eat the senior special. Oops, did I give anything wow. away? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's like 55 and over. Oops, see, I just gave it away again. <laughs> and uh, how's your... That's a, that's a $3 saving. How's, yeah, your big, how's, how's your week been, uh, Jody? I thought Dasha. How's your week been? Oh. Um, my week has been great. Very busy with with a lot of stuff that's been going on. Um, today was kind of fun. We had a fundraiser uh, slash event for the Animal Welfare Association, and um, the the team from the Search and Rescue, the Canine yep. Search and Rescue group that I belong to, we were there in uniform with dogs. And um, on Facebook, uh, when you get a chance, you should take a look. There's some some cool pictures of Jewel. So, all right, yep. good stuff. Uh, Steve, how's your week been? Oh, it's been uh, super awesome. And of course, yesterday I downloaded the new Mac OS 10.10 Yosemite uh, public beta release. I've been trying that out for um, 24 hours. Uh, so that's it's really great uh, getting to use it early. Did you like it? Um, parts of it I liked, parts of it I didn't, uh, 
the good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, of course, it is just the beta, so uh, a lot of the stuff is going to change before the uh, initial uh, release to the rest of the public, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. The only thing with the beta is it's really hard because you don't want to, you know, not everyone has the fortunate of having three or four Macs lying around just to throw a beta on one. And if you've only got one Mac, it's like, do I put the beta on? And what if it stuffs up and then I can't use it? Um, dual boot. Yeah, I no, think. you don't want to do that. Mm. Yeah, I, I put it on my iPad, the iOS. And uh, and it messed up my iPad. Mm. So I'll wait. I'll wait for it comes out. Uh, Josh, welcome. How are you, mate? Josh. Did Josh fall off? I'm not sure where Josh is. Mute buttons in the corner. Josh, are you there? I might have to. Fill I am here. For him. Oh, there welcome. How are you, mate? Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm doing well, and uh, thanks very much, Brad, for having me on the show. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem, mate. Last minute uh, guest. <laughs> yeah, no, you. The original fell through the uh, he'll do. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. The other guy couldn't come on because apparently his cable was up and messed up or something. I don't know what happened to his internet. Oh, that's yeah. That is that is his loss and Josh's gain, and it's exactly. fantastic to have you on the show, Josh. Exactly. Oh, thanks. 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 Josh Appreciate for the win. It. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to have you on. Let's get into some news then, Jody, and uh, we'll we'll chat about him at the end of the at the end at the end of the six stories. And welcome to the news portion of Tech Webcast. I, you know what? Every time that intro plays, it cracks me up. Um, <laughs> really? In what way? <laughs> Isn't it? I, it just does. I mean, I feel like there should be horses and, and like that. Pumping circumstances. Do you listen to that, Josh, and just be like, man, what show am I on here? <laughs> I'm on the Hey, mate, I, I hang around wrestlers, and I'm going to be uh, involved in a show tonight, hanging around with a bunch of them. So nothing, oh, well. shocks, nothing shocks me these days, let me <laughs> tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, today in the news, um, feds bust India-based tech support scam ring for, for fleecy Americans. Well, you know, not every time that you get somebody from tech support are they actually tech support. Evidently, there was a group that was primarily based in India that was masquerading as tech support for Dell, McAfee, and Norton. Um, interestingly enough, the Federal Trade Commission fined members of this ring $5.1 million dollars. The scammer, scammers typically dupe customers by convincing them that their machines were riddled with malware, and then they sent them a bill for repairs. The scam, when it was operational, actually worked kind of brilliantly. The case is unusual because most of the defendants were based in, in India, but they were dealt with by an American federal court. They're banned from ever marketing their computer-centric tech support services ever again but will probably rebrand and continue their odious phishing operations. So, um, again, you can check out the indictments from the FTC, um, but, but that is unusual. Don't you think where um, the, the American government is reaching across the pond and, and finding another... It would be really interesting to see if, if they can create a precedent of that because there's so many things that happen in your right, Jody. It is really interesting where, where things happen overseas, but it's like, hey, you know, we're on the island of whatever the hell it is. Um, so, they, you know, they're not a part of federal U.S. law or, you know, Australian law sort of thing. Um, it would be great if they could actually create a precedent of that and, and continue forward with it because, you know, you want to have some kind of, you know honesty internationally um, for those sorts of things and we get this all the time with this exact story that you're saying there's people who call up um, Australians and they say I'm from Windows there's a problem with your computer but I can help you just let me access your computer by clicking on this and opening up you know external access and once you do that they jump onto your computer and they grab stuff off it details and credit cards and all sorts of things so it's I'm really glad that they've actually got these guys yeah you know, but it's interesting. Did, did you hear about that other um, scam that was going around where they actually locked your computer and they held your files for a fee? And then if um, you paid the money, they would release it? Yeah, that was Otherwise, in Australia. That was in Australia, wasn't it? It was all over. The people in the States were hit with that, too. Oh, were they? Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Only PCs, though. Oh, yeah, only no, PCs? None of the oh. Apple stuff. It's, it's funny how it's only PCs and not Macs. That is funny. Mm. <laughs> oh, we're starting a war here. Okay. <laughs> In other news, okay, I know you guys like Snapchat. I'm not a Snapchat fan. Um, I do, however, like Instagram. 
But apparently, Instagram leaked something that looks a lot like a Snapchat clone, um, following the footsteps of their parent company, Facebook, by developing a Snapchat clone, and then they prematurely leaked it. Last night, some Android users reported seeing notification in their Instagram feed announcing Bolt, a one-tap photo messaging app. The notification, which apparently linked out to a non-existent Google Play page, was taken down soon thereafter. Uh, again, you know, I don't know why they would want to emulate Snapchat, but um, it's the second time in recent months that Facebook has, and I'm using little finger quotes, accidentally uh, released a Snapchat copycat ahead of its schedule. The company de debuted in its own version Slingshot last month, but not before accidentally uploading it to the App Store. Accidentally, again, in finger quotes. Well, it could be Instagram's own Snapchat clone, perhaps because adoption of the Snapchat-like feature, Instagram Direct, which, pe which lets people send private photo messages to other users, isn't meeting their expectations. So who knows if Bolt is going to wind up looking more like Tap Talk, which is a new photo chat app that apparently is faster than Snapchat. And um, that might make some sense. Um, not sure exactly where they're going with it, but um, I like these little accidents that keep happening. A lot. So, but it's yeah, not really yeah. any, and it's not. It's nothing new. It's just people, you know, organizations saying, "Wow, Snapchat have done awesome. Let's see if we can copy what they've done." And this is Facebook's third or fourth yeah. attempt. Obviously, we had um, Poke about a year ago, which was their first shot at it. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting. If they can't buy them, they try and recreate them. But I think everyone's onto them now. Oh, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, more news. Um, you know, Facebook, when they launched, their stock was incredibly disappointing. People felt really duped because they invested, in, and no sooner did they launch, the stock just plummeted. Well, apparently, Facebook st stock hits a new high, and it doubled their IPO price. Um, evidently, their stock topped $76 a share in early trading on Thursday. It's a new all-time high for the company. More than double the IPO price of $38 from May 2012. The company now has a market cap of $193 billion. The stock surged more than 6% overnight following a strong second quarter earnings report thanks to continued growth of ad sales. Facebook reported revenue of $2.91 billion for the June quarter, up more than 60% year over year and coming in well ahead of Wall Street. Um, you know, and again, just a you know, personal note, for people who are using Facebook for marketing or companies that are using Facebook for marketing, they, they've been playing around with um, edge rank and the way that they allow things to, to be seen. And you can't help but wonder whether the, the growth in, in their um, advertising sales may not correlate to the fact that the way that we used Facebook previously doesn't work anymore. So um, I guess the, the bottom line is that investors and analysts are now optimistic about other revenue streams for Facebook, including Instagram ads, video ads on Facebook, and commerce activity, among other areas. Um, the Facebook people are stressing that each of these monetization efforts are going to happen slowly. And you know how we all trust Facebook. So... <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I'm glad at least you laughed, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. Okay. Uh, in other news, a birthday gift from Chromecast $30 of unlimited music. A promotion for the first anniversary of Google Streaming Stick includes three months of all access streaming music and cuts the 35 dongles price to virtually $5. So I guess if you're getting $30 of stuff free, that's how they figure it's, it's, you're only paying five bucks. But then again, if you didn't have the device, you wouldn't be buying the streaming service. That's a whole different story. Um, that's like telling somebody how much they saved. But <laughs> um, And if, you're, if you were already preparing to dive into subscription streaming music service, a birthday gift from Google Play and Chromecast may make it feel like you're getting Google's popular video stick for nearly nothing. An already dirt cheap wireless video dongle that streams video and music to your TV Using Android or iOS devices as remotes, Chromecast launched a year ago, Thursday, to fervent popular appeal. Yeah, we all ran out and bought it. 
<laughs> I remember but, that. But wait, and that lasted more. about ten minutes. But uh, actually, they they're offering this promotion that cuts the price to five dollars, provided you were already planning to pay for a subscription streaming music service. Anyway, if you purchase a thirty-five dollar Chromecast before the end of September. Um, buyers will be comped three months of Google Play Music All Access. So run right out and get your Chromecast today. Anybody running out to get one? Um, I, I, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Nice. And uh, Andrew's got one. Andrew, yes, so you... it's very good. Actually, it was a, a gift from the lovely Jennifer. <laughs> it was indeed. Oh, and okay. uh, when was the last time you used yours? Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, some time ago. Look, it's it's a fantastic device. I have I have some yes. friends who are real Android centric. Everything is sort of Android devices and, and Google, and and they bought the Chromecast and said they absolutely fell in love with it instantly. So I don't use it as much because I'm Mac central, yeah, but um, it's a fantastic device if if you're, you know, if if you want that sort of thing and you're particularly Android. So yeah, great. Yeah, it works fantastic. <laughs> you uh, should ask them if they still use it. Who, who, yeah, you should ask them, Andrew, and let us know next week. Well, they do. They use it every, every day, every night. They actually have it hooked wow. into the TV, and they have an Android uh, tablet, which they use as a remote control, and they connect oh, it through their PC as well. So all of the content and TV shows and things that they bring in, they use their um, tablet to actually, as a remote, to the Chromecast. The apps, uh, the, um, the photos on the Chromecast look fantastic. Some of the photos oh, yeah. on the display. Looks great. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, good hmm. stuff. Interesting. Good stuff, yeah. Um, Josh, do you use a Chromecast at all? No, I don't, but I've heard really, really good things about it, and uh, I'm tempted to get on board, I must okay. say. Are you an Apple person or an Android person? Uh, more Android. I've, I've always I've always had, with laptops and, and PCs, I've always yeah. had Windows, and then with the phone, it was kind of that thing where, oh, do I want to make the full transition? So I haven't yet, but I'm also tempted to get an iPhone just because uh, they're a great emergency oh, yeah, pod, podcast tool as well. Yeah, definitely. So. I just want to mention Casey, uh, a good uh, friends with Casey Andrew um, from the US uh, bought an iPhone 5s uh, yesterday. Yeah, he did. Um, Casey is uh, um, Grizzlack, I think yes. is his surname, and um, he bought a 5s yesterday, and he's been really enjoying it so far. And he's he's quite a design was actually. So if yeah, you um, guess where, yeah, guess why uh, guess why he moved from the Android. <laughs> Why is that? Because he, uh, he he was getting annoyed with the updates and stuff. He couldn't update. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, but no, he's he's a great guy. And if anyone actually needs a really good um, designer, graphics arts guy, get in touch with us because he's a fantastic yeah, um, person and a really good designer. So yeah, give you a little plug there, Casey. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked about that about him moving to the iPhone. It's pretty good. Good to see more people moving to the iPhone. Well, it'll be interesting to see what his opinion is. Um, he loves it so far. I just I spoke to him on uh, iMessage. Just... They were probably very pro iPhone, pro Apple on this. But you know, to be entirely fair, though, it's it's really fantastic that we have two great companies who are creating, you know, great platform and great software and, and sort of competing with each other to give us better things in the yeah. future. Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, Steve, how's your iPhone going? You, you have an Android device, what are you? Yeah, I kind of went to the dark side slightly. Uh, I've got a uh, Android tablet for testing and yeah. for app, you know, see how the Android side is. Uh, so when I, you know, um, blog about it or whatever, um, mm -hmm. at least I have some idea, you know, how it works. So... Yeah, yeah I've been, I, I, I use it a little bit every day, so. Good stuff, mate. What about you, Jody? Have you um, used an, an Android device for, at all? Um, have I used one? Well, one of my friends, unfortunately, her Apple iPhone was stolen. And when she went to replace it, they, um, they were going to charge her, I think, $200 to replace it. So instead, she got an Android. And she kept asking me how to work it. You know, when you get a, an Apple phone, it seems like the interface is somewhat intuitive. Once you start playing with it, you can, there might be one or two things that are a little bit quirky, but for the most part, it's kind of intuitive. But she, like, I'm telling you, she would ask me, how do I do this on this phone? And I go, oh, I can figure it out. It's not that easy, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's not very easy on an Android phone. Right? I mean, it does a lot. It does a lot. But, yeah. but to figure out exactly how you do it, it's just not as intuitive. I don't think, mm. but um, yeah, it, it, she was getting very frustrated with it. But I, I think you know, once she mastered it a little bit, she she likes she likes it. But I think she still would admit that the Apple was much easier. But uh, what phone did she get? Uh, I think it was one of the Galaxies. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, it, in one ear and out the other. But it was a premium <laughs> phone, wasn't it? It wasn't like one of those ninety nine dollar cheapy things. Oh, probably not. Um, don't they don't they come out like? 
I mean, I don't think they're as expensive anyway. So oh, she probably would have got one on a, on a plan, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, yeah. that's all, that's all good. Android's okay. I'm not a fan of it, but and you know, each to their own. Okay. Well, we got a couple more news stories. You want me to? Yeah, go ahead, Jody. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, if you're a Steve wannabe, you might want to be interested in downloading Apple's OS X Yosemite um, because the public beta is now available for download. Um, evidently, they decided Apple decided that they're going to send out beta invitations to the public for this OS X OS X or OS X Yosemite. Um, but the beta is only open to the first 1 million people. So if you haven't signed up and there's only 900, whatever, I mean, you could still sign up if there's less than a million, but if, once they hit a million, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. You might get an invitation in your inbox um, to provide you with instructions on how to download the beta. We have, we have an echo. Um, the build is said to be one version newer than what had been released in the dev channel. Um, there's a caveat, and um, evidently uh, it's stable. There's some graphical bugs here and there, but for the most part, they're saying it, they feel that it runs fairly well. So, again, if, um, if you're interested in downloading that beta and being the first person on your block to have it, and, but possibly blowing up your machine... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> you can, it up, as long as you're one of the first one million. <laughs> and similarly, Jody, we, we have a beta available for the Zarfo app. The first one million people can download it from the App Store right now. Okay. Oh, so, that, that one I will download. Yeah. I love Zarfo. <laughs> Zarfo. Definitely, definitely Zarfo right now and tell us what you tell us what you're doing. Only the first million users. Yeah. I got a Zarfo at the uh, Okay, Jody, what's your next story? I'm going to, I can't do that right now. I have to re-download Zarfo. Okay. Okay. We'll wait. Next one. <laughs> um, one of the UK politicians called for in-game thieves to be prosecuted like real criminals. In some of the most popular multiplayer role-playing games like World of Warcraft, um, in-game characters and items can change hands for substantial amounts of real money. So... When a gamer is relieved of valuable loot or accounts by scammers or thieves, should these online opportunists be considered criminals? It's a question one UK politician wanted to address in Parliament, and he called for a real-world sentence to be handed out for these virtual crimes. <laughs> the politician, a World of Warcraft player himself, now why is this sounding like maybe he got scammed, okay? He requested that the UK Justice Minister accelerate legislation to that effect, arguing that gamers are entitled to the same amount of legal protection. He added that only serious and or serial offenders be targeted, though, rather than throwing the book at anyone who's committed a minor indiscretion. All right. I, I, you know what? I'm sorry. This is a game. These people are playing a game, right? So. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I, I just have to share with you, okay? Um, a friend of mine would sit there for hours and kill, I think they're called hill, hill giants or hill gnomes or who knows. And they, like he couldn't get past the level. And somebody in the game had said to him, look, I can help you get to the next level. Just give me your username and password and I'll get you through. And then, you know, you can give me, I don't know, like whatever they collect, he was supposed to trade with him. So this rocket scientist, what does he do? He does. He gives him his, his username and password. Oh, no. So, so guess what? The guy, you know, did he get him to the next level? I don't know that he did, but he certainly cleaned out all of his stuff. And um, my friend, not. I know, like, like you couldn't see this coming. You know, I mean, really. So I don't know. I mean, do you guys have any thoughts about this? Uh, it's kind of like... You know, I'd, I'd definitely trust Bob 32194Z on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Just give him your username yeah. and password. Yeah. I'll get you to the next level. Um, Josh, what are you, what's your view on this story? Oh, I was just wondering if he was also the uh, Royal Prince of Jamaica or uh, Nigeria. I Nigeria. wonder if... Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I wonder if he need. I wonder if he needed uh, some ex some extra funds. We might be able to help a fella out. But I've got uh, a in San Francisco. I can sell him. There you go. So oh, wow. You. Um, what um, about you, Steve? Um, actually, I I know some people who used to get be heavily into gaming, and they would actually sell their characters 
uh, for high amounts of money. So, but I, I I think it's against the terms of service with a lot of gaming services, and or they put it in there later. So you know I, I don't see it being uh, you know like against the law per se because they're kind of breaking the terms of service as well. And even if the police went up to him and, you know, the gaming company, whatever, is, you know, oh, these, he lost his, you know, uh, uh, item, his expensive items, you know, we, we got to catch the criminal, you know, I, I just don't see that happening. It's just, you know, but think about this. Okay. I mean, it, it's a game, right? So, so if somebody is that stupid to give somebody else their username and password because they think they're going to get to a next level, aren't they just as guilty of trying to cheat? So, so if they, give that information to somebody who winds up ripping them off. They're both stupid. Uh, stay of your stream just went off, went offline, mate. Um, no, uh, I think I'm okay on this side. I'm not showing any, uh, just said went offline. Think. And mom watching the Justin TV now. We just said went offline. Uh, anybody else showing that from, uh, yep. It says offline. So, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. So it's not on the line. That's okay, not on we'll, that's we'll not check on, it from offline. my end. It's not online. <laughs> Yeah, it does seem to be... Uh, so don't, it's down, mate. This is, yeah. this is beginning to feel like brain hands. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> Jody, great line. stuff for reading the uh, news, by the way. Great. Thanks for reading the news. Okay, we may have to... Uh, oh. Yeah, you're back now, Steve. Oh, are you? Okay, okay. there you go. Fantastic news as always, Jody. Yeah, and definitely. Um, <laughs> and thank you, Jacob, who usually puts the news items together each week. Yeah, in the, uh, thank you, Jacob. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. All right, uh, Andrew, we've got uh, a guest on today. We do. We have uh, Josh Armour online from Wrestle Radio Australia. G'day, Josh. How you doing, buddy? Mate, it's really, uh, really great to be on. And uh, yeah, I love sort of sitting on on, on other shows and uh, yeah, seeing how other people do things. It's really cool. You guys have got a, a good chemistry happening. I love it. How do you, you enjoyed it so far, mate? Yeah, good fun. Good fun. Loving so, it. Tell us about um, before before your show. Let's talk on the podcast. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, totally. Well, uh, that's something that I guess uh, we sort of got involved in the first. Uh, Google Live uh, Hangout session, yeah. I guess, with Jackson. We were talking That's about it. Oz Podcasts and, uh, a few weeks ago. And Oz Podcasts, I guess, is just a, a movement that we're trying to really trying to uh, sort of bring forward to the people and let people know about it. You know, those that, that do enjoy listening to online audio, um, letting them know that, you know, there are some great homegrown shows and uh, it's just about promoting them, helping each other out and um, just spreading the, the awareness really of that, of that. So, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. And, um, and what, and what do you do? What do you do at odds podcasts? So. Uh, well, I've just been sort of, I guess, just sort of just helping Jackson out, just sort of giving it, just sort of, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth and oh, yeah. uh, just letting him know what I can and can't do. He's really the brains behind the whole thing. He, he's the man who's doing it all. You know, I'm just yeah. sort of, I'm just sort of one of those folks like yourself and Josh Liston and all those crew that, to, uh, yeah, just trying to spread the awareness. Yeah, definitely, I, I yeah. love it. And and the, there's also a Facebook page as well on, on there as well for that. Yep, there's Oz Pod. Just search Oz Podcasts on Facebook. There's also the the Twitter at Oz Podcasts. Um, if you're actually tweeting uh, or you know posting about a, an Australian podcast, if you just use the hashtag Oz Pods, uh, that's uh, sort of one we're trying to get around as well. So yeah, get onto it, folks. Sweet mate. Good stuff. So, Josh, you've been podcasting for quite some time, haven't you? Uh, no, not really. It's only it's only really been no, oh, gee, since uh, March last year. So it's just uh, oh, just okay. over a year. Yeah, that's good. And uh, how'd you get into it? Well, I, I, through my involvement with um, with pro wrestling in Australia, I guess I've been doing the announcing at Riot City Wrestling here in Adelaide since 2010, and. A fellow who ran a website called, called Wrestle Hustle, which is still around, I think WrestleHustle dot com. He um, he approached, he came to one of our live shows in Adelaide. He came over from New South Wales and approached me later on and said, "Hey, do you want to do a, a podcast for the website?" And I thought, "Well, I don't really have the means to," and I didn't. I wasn't. I'm not much of a. I'm not really that much of a tech head to be honest. So I, I wasn't that sure. Like, okay, how do I go about this? And then about uh, about six or twelve months later, he hit me up again and said you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, I, I really do because I was listening to more podcasts and really, really enjoying the medium. Um, and as, as a fan of radio since I was a kid, I mean, it was the idea that I could put together basically my own radio show and have, you know, whether it's two people or 200 or, you know, however many people listen to it, that's really cool. So, um, so, you know, the first episode I did, I, I, I sat in the car cause I thought I've got to find a quiet space with no echo. So sat in the car with my phone and some notes and just banged out a, a half hour show. And, um, 
it all sort of started from from there back in March. And then once we we got an interview with um, one of the the local wrestlers from Melbourne, but where we sort of uh, you know used to work with him a lot, um, Matt Silver. We, uh, we, my mate sort of sat down, had a chat with him over Skype for about 15 minutes. That was our first interview uh, a few days later because he just got signed by WWE. And yeah, that, that really sort of got the ball rolling from there. Once, once Toddy sat down and had a chat with Matt, it was like, you know what? We've, we've got something here. So, uh, yeah, it started off as Wrestle Hustle Radio, and then we sort of wanted to just give it our own our own name and, you know, do do the show the way that we wanted to. And uh, Wrestle Radio Australia, I thought, what what better way? We're, we're Aussies, we talk about wrestling, and we promote the uh, the Australian scene. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Absolutely. You're also on uh, Podomatic as well, uh, Josh. How do you like Podomatic? Um, look, um, Podomatic is one of those things where it, it's it's quite dear, and it's one of those things where I, I guess I realised that it after a, a, a certain amount of time. So, like, I mean, I don't know how many subscribers we do exactly have. I'm guessing it's somewhere around two to three, four hundred, maybe. I may be overshooting the mark there totally, but it's, I think it's around there. So whether I'm going to actually move to a service like Libsyn with that show, because that's the service that we use for my other show, Butts and Seats uh, oh. podcast. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe sort of doing the switch and then giving folks that a couple of months to, to make the transition to the new link, just because it, it'll mean that we can get, the, you know, more shows out, uh, or not more shows, but, you know, keep doing the show uh, for a longer time frame and not have to actually remove stuff from the library because right. um, some of our old interview editions are, are some of our best stuff, so we don't really want to cull those but yeah. uh yeah but podomatic is, is is convenient and that's the good thing about it if you're starting off i guess as a podcaster it's it's a good way to go oh definitely oh that's right i've started from day one i've been on there since day one and i've never left so you know they've been good to me and uh yeah podomatic rocks yeah, no, it is very convenient uh, with all the stats and everything. It's really good. But uh, also, the it just makes it real easy as well if you don't really know what you're doing yeah. to get your show to iTunes and Stitch, all those places, yeah, you know, definitely. so that's good, good times. Definitely. Andrew, any questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, running Wrestle Radio Australia, do you, ha you have wrestlers come on and sort of interview and so forth? Yeah, totally. And uh, we were doing it for uh, for quite a while there through Skype, like, you know, I was oh, using okay. uh, whatever whatever software recording program I could use, whether it was uh, uh, Powergrammo, then it, I tried Pamela for one, and then Powergrammo stopped working. I had a strange problem with, uh, with recording where it would – everything during recording sounded fine, but as soon as I'd play it back, there'd be this weird – looping so you'd hear like three seconds of audio and then that would loop over itself and you'd hear it again and then it was just this continuous problem so ended up using a, a program called applying uh applying skype telecorder and that worked for a couple of months like perfectly and then all of a sudden the person on the other end was getting a, a weird echo so i'm thinking why why is this happening on the recording so now i've said you know what bugger it we'll just record how we can and yeah. uh most of the interviews now we, we try and get a hold of the talent when they're actually in adelaide it must be kind of funny interviewing wrestlers sometimes because obviously as a wrestler you have to have this sort of persona this sort of fun um, you know, tough guy or do, do, do sometimes when you actually interview them, are they playing themselves as, as you know, as a person who runs down to 7-Eleven to grab the bread and milk or they're actually playing their wrestling persona and can that be sort of weird and funny <laughs> sometimes? It, it can be because I mean, like I prefer interviews when we do them on the show to be, you know, the, the, the real person, you know what I mean? Um, and naturally a lot of the, the wrestling personalities, even on the Australian scene, they are very extroverted sort of uh, people and they're very outgoing so you can easily get that personality out of them um and i like to sort of to to get that but for the most part i mean we've had a couple of people that have said hey look and it's it's only been a short interview so like hey look i'd, I'd like to stay in character um maybe because they don't they don't do many interviews so they think well there's obviously a reason why my character doesn't do many interviews so if i'm gonna do it and I'm a bad guy or a bad girl, then I'm going to sort of put it on. You do get that now and then, but for the mo it's only a couple of times. For the most it'd, it'd part... It'd be fun to have um, two guests on the show and have the character and then the person, like, afterwards. <laughs> that'd be kind of weird. <laughs> that'd, that'd be quite entertaining, sort of, uh, yeah, like a bit of, uh, oh, what's what's the, uh, what's Jack Jekyll and Hyde? Yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah exactly. All right. What, what sort of equipment do you use to record, uh, Josh, when you, for your podcast? Uh, I do it very bare bones or as bare bones as, as you'd call it, you know, in right. 2014. Um, 
I've got a HP uh, laptop with Windows 8, which okay. I wish I wish it was actually running 7, but it's it's a new one, so it's got 8. Um, and then, yep, Skype to to uh, to do the shows or Google Hangouts. Yep. We, uh, I like I really like to use that uh, app when I can just because it's convenient, record straight to YouTube, bang, you, you can't go wrong. Um, and also, as far as the, the mic goes, we've got an ATR2100, uh, just with a little little pop filter over the top and then the, the pop shield in front. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't sort of have a mixer yet. I'm really okay. sort of, really just sort of um, get the shows out the way I can and then use Audacity to, uh, to edit the shows. Yeah, so, uh, Audacity is uh, fantastic. I love Audacity. Oh yeah, for for a free program and and what it can do, you know, it's uh, it, it really is quite remarkable. Got, I think. Got a question from Jacob Jones. He wants to know: Do you know Adam Rose? I know of Adam Rose at least. Yes, and uh, he's one of he's one of my favourites at the moment. And uh, I love the bunny. You can actually, yeah, the bunny's actually got a Twitter at wwe underscore bunny, so you okay. can follow the no, bunny. bunny. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know wrestling, you'd be like, why is he talking about a bunny rabbit and wrestling in the same sentence? Trust me, there's a tie-in. It all comes together at some point there. Um, yeah, no, Adam Rose is, is good. I prefer him much more to the uh, the Leo Kruger gimmick, although I thought it had legs. Um, I think with the, the shield being around at the time, I thought, oh, we've got to switch this guy up, make him a bit different. So uh, he's a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, it'd be good if we could get some more actual like WWE, or actual WWE yeah. personalities yeah. on the show. It's yep. just so tough because they – the the rigmarole you got to go through to get to get a hold of uh you know media, um uh, sort of press passes and whatnot and you know for them to okay you to do it it's, it's yeah. Like what about Hulk crazy. Hogan? Have you spoke to Hulk Hogan before? Oh God no 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 we've um gosh that that that'd be a dream interview that oh, wow we, that that would I could end yeah. it all after that I mean like <laughs> uh, someone who grew up watching wrestling in Dwayne. the early nineties um Hulk Hogan was the yeah. was the man when I was seven or eight years old there Definitely. was no there was no one better. What, what's that TV show that he had out on on, on uh, MTV? Hulk, Hogan, Hogan knows, knows best. best. Yeah, Hogan knows best. That was oh, a good that, show. That's the one. I think I managed to get through about two episodes, and really? I, he's he's uh, his daughter and his his ex wife are a bit brutal, so yeah, I don't yeah, know if I can handle it. Yeah, I, I love that show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might have to check it out then. Yeah, did she, hey, check it out? It's very cool. Um, Jody, any questions? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I'm just curious why wrestling. As in for the podcast or in general? Yeah, yeah, both. I mean, what, what's your, what's the interest? How did you get involved? What makes, what intrigues you about it? Hmm, that's, see, that's one of those things where when you ask someone who, who's into wrestling, what intrigues you about it? And it's, I mean, it's, I guess when I was a little kid, I sort of started watching it and it was, it was one of these things where like, wow, this is like a, a, a real live action you know, movie, but played out, you know, in front of people, you know, there's, there's, there's one take and that's, that's the way it goes. And, you know, it's in front of it, basically a TV show shot in front of a, an arena of 12, 13,000 people, um, every, every Monday night, that sort of thing. So I don't know, I guess it was just, yeah, the, the, the big bodies, the, um, you know, the fact that there, there's the, the fighting, there's the conflict and there's also these sort of these other things as well, these other segments, the entertaining stuff, you know, the characters that um, will make you laugh more than go oh, rip his bloody head off. You know what I mean? So there's, uh, it's really, it's really hard to pinpoint one particular thing or even a few things because it's uh, it's the, it's the whole package in general. I guess the easiest way to explain it is, you know, there's folks out there who love live theater and there's folks out there who love going to the circus. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, yeah. That sort of thing. It's the same sort of thing, really. It's um, it's just this amalgam of of different forms of entertainment all coming together, which is um, and and athleticism, you know, and risk taking as well, yeah, which definitely. is uh, which makes it definitely, it adds that other aspect of intrigue as well when somebody's going to do a flip off the top rope, and you know, like sure, it looks pretty, but there's a chance they could also you know, break their neck. Definitely so definitely. it's, um, there's a lot that goes into it. And, uh, I guess in that way with the risk and the athleticism that's involved, that's maybe something that people take for granted. They just go, Oh, it's that fake stuff. But the Is amount it? of injuries that I've seen in the past 12 months, just in Australia alone, um, from people who, you know, what one, one guy, um, I think one guy came off the second rope, which is, you know, about five feet off the ground and just went to sort of clothesline a guy and, fell awkwardly on his ankle and twisted his leg, like snapped his wow. leg and he's out for 12 months. Jeez. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, is it, is it all real or some of, is it, is it some of, some fake or? 
Well, the, that's that's the thing. What's real and fake? I mean, the sure the the outcomes are predetermined. Mm. Um, so the wrestlers go out there; they know what the finish is. That the, the booker gives them an idea of this is what we need, and then you guys go out there and deliver that okay. how you can. Um, so there is physical contact. It's you know it's no different to, to playing footy, playing rugby, mm. um, UFC. I mean, in in the case that it's physical contact, you know what I mean. But at the same time, everybody's out there to protect each other. So two opponents out there are out there to actually look after each other, make it look like they're hurting each other and having a physical contest while at the same time putting on a show. All right. And they're really actors, aren't they? And and good ones at that. That's, as you said, they're told, you know, this is what the, the end game is, but how you get there, just entertain the people, make them go crazy. And um, it's as you said, Brad, is, is it real is a, a big question, I think, in wrestling because you've got some people, you know, who... Are probably like yeah you know it's 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 all real all these people who say it's fake and it's made up a a lying um and then you've got some people who probably think every single movie is choreographed and i think to some extent it's kind of like without getting too too off, off topic it's kind of like santa claus in a way you know it is mm. however real it is in your head is is as real as it actually is you know it's definitely it's as much as you want to make it well that's it and it's uh, i the way the easiest way to explain it for me is okay you like sitting down going to watch action movies you know that you know that you know people aren't really getting shot you know that that car that's jumping over 20 other cars is probably in front of a green screen and is doing it in a in a big uh, a big shed somewhere it, you know it's it's that same sort of thing where you suspend your disbelief whether it's for what sitting sitting down watching a match or watching a two two three hour show you you sit there and you get into it you know when you when you go to rocky horror and you go see that live, you know, you get into it. You, you cheer for your favourite characters and that sort of thing. It's it's the same sort of thing. Uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, or Sound of Music, rather, you know, with the people go there and sort of, it's sort of like panto a pantomime in a way, you know, people really get into it in the crowd. So it's, it's, it's live theatre slash action slash sports, you know, slash, uh, you know, the production. I mean, I'm really proud to be with a company like Wright City Wrestling in Adelaide, which, you know, not blowing our own horn, but we feel we have the best production in, in the country and wrestlers have come from overseas and said, you guys blow, blow our stuff out of the water. And that's a huge compliment, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big amalgam of, of different stuff. And uh, I must say that it, it, sitting down watching it on telly is one thing. Experiencing it live, that's that's something else completely. I've never actually been to a live wrestling match before. No, just to give them a bit of a plug, Wright City Wrestling. If someone's interested, how could they actually go and have a look? Is there a website? There is. There's uh, riotcitywrestling.com and also on Facebook. Um, the Facebook pages are much more active than the actual website. There's much more updates on there. Um, you'll find out, you know, when the next show is, what the matches are going to be. There's preview videos. There's uh, promo interviews and, and matches as well that you can watch from past shows. And uh, if you're listening live and you're actually in Adelaide tonight at the Latvian Hall at Wayville, 7.30 p.m., we've got an event tonight and it's a, uh, a lucha event. So we're getting the yeah, the Mexican theme on and all the masks are going to be coming out. It's going to be fun. Good stuff, good stuff. Andrew, have you been to a wrestling match? I've never been to a wrestling no, match, I no. Um, it's, you know, I've, I've seen it on TV. It's I, I don't watch the whole thing if it's tally, but I'll, I'll tend to sit there and sort of watch 15 or 20 minutes or watch, you know, the end of the, the bout that's on. And it's it's really interesting. It, 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 it is an art, you know. It's as much as going to the opera or theatre. Oh, it's, yeah. it's it's an expression of art. So it's it's great. It's You know, there's something for everyone. All right, Steve, any questions for uh, Josh? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I just want to, well, make one statement about, you know, wrestlers, I mean, some a lot of it is chore choreographed, but uh, a lot of them do get hurt. I, I, I believe Hulk Hogan has an artificial hip and an artificial knee, I believe. Uh, from what yeah, I yeah, he's he's been in the wars, uh, and mainly it's actually the the most damage he suffered was from doing that. He always did that big leg drop, and then he'd get the one, two, three. That was his uh, his finish spot, and yeah, from from actually you know. Jumping up, you know, four or five feet in the air, and then landing on your ass uh, every night for twenty odd years. I mean, that's that's going to do some damage to your to your spine, to your tailbone, and and to your hip. And that's exactly what um, what happened with him. Yeah, I mean, if you look up pro wrestling injuries, the uh, the the amount of careers that have been cut short from injuries is just uh, ridiculous, you know. And and back in the day, a lot of the the eighties wrestlers, you know, suffered from uh, uh, you know. Uh, 
painkiller addictions and drug addictions and a lot of this stuff, a lot of the American sort of big names, there are a few of them, but uh, that's really starting to sort of clean up now in, 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 the, in the big time scene just because WWE really do look after their um, after their talent. But as far as it being choreographed, I mean, the, the, to be honest, the best wrestlers – and the best workers, we call them, which means, you know, you're going out there and you're working the crowd, you know, you to get a reaction, you know, whether you're the bad guy or the good guy. The, the main thing is to get a reaction. If the crowd is sitting there on their hands, you, you're doing something wrong. But if someone's at least getting booed or getting cheered, that's that's good stuff because the crowd are engaged and they're into you as a character. But, yeah, the, the, best, the best workers don't actually pre-choreograph much of their stuff you know they go out there and they can talk and the wrestlers do go out there and they, they talk in their ear and whatnot and they sort of they or, or they just feed off their body language and that's one of these things where wrestlers like that go over to mexico and japan they may not speak the language but it's just sort of like music when you get together with a room full of great musicians you know there's just a language there you know you just you just you can speak the language of music and sometimes you can actually do that. A good, good wrestlers do that um, with wrestling. Me personally, I did about a year and a half of training and then I just realized I'm no good. Like in the ring, I, I suck. Uh, it's, it's not for me. I don't have the, the balls to sort of go out there and do what these guys and girls do all yeah, the time. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, yeah, luckily I, I had a spot on the mic. I still do the announcing at Wright City and then I actually oh. ha- end up with a bad back. Can you um, give us a, a demo of the announcement you do at the... Oh, jeez, I don't want to blow the mic out here, but... Uh, <laughs> you can. Um, all right, Riot City residents, are you ready to riot? That's sort of a little bit of the gimmick okay. there. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, like you know, it's um, it's just it's great. It's great fun. I absolutely um, absolutely love the love the pro wrestling. And uh, yeah, luckily I've got that mic spot because yeah, after a year and a half of training, ended up with a bad back. And I mean, I still have trouble with my back to this day. It's uh, it's not pretty. But um, yeah, it's uh, that that just goes to show that you know, a year and a half of training, let alone actually wrestling a match, um, can actually take it out of you if it. If it's not for you, so yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, Josh, where can they get hold of you if they want to get con- in con- contact with you, mate? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I'm on Twitter at Josh JD Armor. Um, also on Facebook at Josh JD Armor. If you want to find Wrestle Radio Australia, um, where we talk about yeah WWE, the American sort of scene, and Australian wrestling, we're big on promoting that. So we interview with the local stars. We tell you where the the local shows are for the coming weekend. That's on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. It's yep. on TuneIn Radio and Podomatic. So just search Wrestle Radio Australia, and that's on Twitter at Wrestle Radio A. You. All right, I'll put the links into the show notes and people can check it out. Fantastic. Uh, and you'll be back on in two weeks for the Thrones show, Josh. I will be, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be a doozy. That's going to be a party by the sounds of it. Well, so look maybe out. A party, maybe a party. I just told Andrew to stay around for a couple more hours because you never know, it could go on for a long time. Nice. <laughs> um, and let um, uh, what's his name from Oz Podcast? What's his name? The guy, Jackson. Jackson. That's yes. You let him know he's in role, so involved too. Will do, definitely. Right. Love that. Okay, and what's your final view of this show, uh, Josh? Did you enjoy your time here, mate? Mate, I had a great time. I want to thank all of you for um, for having me on, and I just think that yeah, you guys have got a really good uh, a really good thing going here. Like I said, I listened to a couple of shows yesterday to uh, sort of get used to uh, how things are done, and yeah, I think it's uh, you guys have got a, got a great thing happening. So, oop, there goes the uh, there goes me knocking the uh, the mic boom. <laughs> All right, mate. Keep appreciate doing, your feedback. Keep doing, what you, keep doing what you're doing, guys. Yeah, it's we, we always do, mate, and appreciate your feedback. Uh, also, next week we're going to have uh, Ozdroid on next week for Android. Uh, the oh, the stream, okay. Android. Uh, it's going to be on. Nice. Nice one, yep. Can't wait. Uh, J.D. Rains. Yes. What's your final view on this show and where can they get hold of you? Oh, well, uh, there's never a final view, but I think well, the interim opinion. final view. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think the show is great. I'm I'm really intrigued by the the wrestling stuff. I love the voice. Um, Thank you. I, yeah, and then I appreciate your sharing kind of what you love about it, which um, I think you you kind of get a feeling of of what happens and and how exciting it can be. Um, it's not for everyone. Rest- <laughs> I must say. No, it's true. It's true. You know, it's you know with. But it, but it's cool. I, I agree with you. I think there's there's a lot. It's, it's theater actually. So that's. But uh, no, and and especially the sounds and the voice. That was <laughs> for me. That was the highlight. 
<laughs> so, um, uh, with regard to uh, where you can find me, you can find me on uh, Twitter as Sunswept. You can find me uh, pretty much everywhere else as either Jody Rains or my website, which is webmarcom.net. All right, good stuff, Jody. Steve, what about you, mate? <laughs> Um, actually, it was a, uh, I enjoyed this show because I was actually a, a bigger wrestling fan when I was younger, and uh, we had our local, we had like a local um, wrestling on local television, uh, Tojo Yamamoto, and there's several others. So it kind of takes nice. me back to the past, uh, which was a lot of fun. And uh, whereabouts, whereabouts is your territory, so um, to speak? Well, now wrestling. I'm in Texas, but I, I live down uh, toward Tennessee, and. Uh, nice. And we have a lot of locals go to the uh, wrestling matches in, in Chattanooga, a big area down there, when it used to yeah. come by. Uh, besides that, you can find me on Twitter uh, as Chatterbox underscore live. And, of course, Justin.tv forward slash Linda's Cool Dude. And, of course, you can also see the live version of the Tech Webcast after my show and also on techwebcast.info. Good one, Steve. Did you come across that mic uh, stand thing for me? That- oh, I, I've been looking. Uh, no, now, I didn't have as much time because uh, I, I was very busy the last couple of days. Um, I mean, yeah, there's some out there, but like, uh, I haven't checked prices yet, but I've been trying to find somewhere close to Australia or in Australia. I, I oh, do whatever. know one send, of Whatever. If you can send from, from America, I'll pay the whatever it is, mate. I'll pay whatever. But Yeah, I need okay. one sort of pay, say, pay. Hey, Andrew Cunningham, happy birthday to Christy, by the way. Tell her that, please. Yeah, big happy birthday to Christy. Um, So we're just getting ready to do a few things later this afternoon and this evening, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, But yeah, it's been great to have you on the show, Josh. And um, yeah, really really good to hear about wrestling and the scene in Australia. And sort of like Jody, I'm not hugely into it per se. I'm not against it by any means. And it's Mm. just great to have someone on who has a passion and to hear about that. And um, sort of enjoy that for an, for an hour. So um, yeah, it's been been fantastic. And if you want to get a hold of me, I am on Facebook and Twitter as Cunning Drew, and you can get me on the Zafa app at Andrew. And something new we've got coming soon is Rewind. So that's at R W N D app A W P dot com. So jump on there and have a look at it, and um, we'll let you know in the next I few actually, weeks. Actually, uh, seen that. I've actually seen that app in demo the other day. It's great stuff, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, we'll um, we just finished a, an alpha, so we're we're pretty excited. It's a bit of fun, and we'll let you know more Matt, as it starts to happen. I mentioned the giveaway too. Next week, we're going to announce the winner of the Chrome yes, the- yes, Brad. There's a giveaway with Chromecast. Get yourself ninety days, three months worth of free Chromecast. Um, actually, free Quick Flix. I'm sorry, yes. and a free Chromecast <laughs> device. Yep. And um, all you need to do is jump onto the Facebook page or tweet us what you want to watch on Quick Flix. So just let us know what you want to watch, and you can get yourself three months free access and a free Chromecast. So jump on Facebook or Twitter, and what movie or what TV show do you really want to look forward to watching on Quick Flicks? Yep. And also shout out to Brian Bowie. He actually got a uh, new Chromebook the other day. Good on him for getting that. Um, I sort of he asked me to mention it, so I did. Uh, who else would have mentioned? Andrew, anyone else want to do a shout out to him at all? Or? Uh. Just a shout out to, to Brian, Vincent, Brad, Jacob, and all of our other regular listeners out there. So yeah. thanks for listening and hope you enjoy the show. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to our big 300 in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, can't wait for that, man. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a great show. And also, yeah, shout out to Vincent. He got a new Mac the other day, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, thanks, Jody. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Josh and Andrew. Thanks for being on. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Tech webcast. Cause technology moves so fast. Tech webcast. Ha, stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Big ups to Andrew, to Brad, Jody, Steve, and Jennifer!